Welcome to csstudents.com, a learning portal for company secretary students. Presentation on the Directors and Managerial Remuneration, Part 2. The New Companies Act was partially enacted on 12 September 2013, and majority sections became effective from 1 April 2014. Under the new Act, the basic provisions relating to the directors and managerial remunerations are similar to the old Act. However, there are some changes also. In the first part of the presentation, we discussed the type of managerial personnel and their basic remuneration limits. We also discussed that the remuneration limits are linked with the annual profits of the company. In this part, we would discuss some more provisions relating to the managerial remuneration. So, now coming back to the percentage limits of remuneration. As discussed in Part 1, under Section 197 of the Companies Act, the total limit of remuneration is 11%. This 11% is to be divided by 10% for MD, WTD, and Manager subject to 5% limit for each personnel, and 1% between the non-executive directors, if company has no MD or WTD or manager. In that event, non-executive directors can get up to 3% of the profits. But imagine a scenario, if the company has no profits at all. For example, New companies take 3 to 5 years to actually generate the profits. Existing companies may also incur a loss in a particular year. For instance, many companies started making losses in 2008 financial meltdown. So, if the remuneration is linked with the profits under Section 197, and the company makes losses in a particular year, should we say, the permissible remuneration is going to be zero. But, in real life, managing directors or managers will not work for free. You need good business executives to run the business. Therefore, the company will need to keep paying them to run the business and to take the company out from the losses. The situation may also arise in a particular year. The company does not have sufficient profits. This situation is known as inadequacy of profits. Let's understand the loss or inadequacy of profits with an example. X Limited has a yearly profit of Rs. 1,20,000 for the purpose of calculating managerial remuneration. X Limited anticipates the same or higher level of profits in the coming years. So, it appointed one managing director for a yearly remuneration of rupees 6000 which is 5% of the profits now in very next year x limited's profit becomes zero in that scenario allowable remuneration limit will also become zero and x limited will not be able to pay salary to its md or in a different year x limited's profits are drastically reduced to rupees 10000 then should the MD remuneration be rupees 500 per year, based on the 5% limit under Section 197? In real life, your managing director will not work without salary, or for very less salary. Depending on his capability, you need to keep paying him to run the business. The Companies Act recognizes these situations and subsection 3 of section 197 deals with them. Now, we see the provision of subsection 3. It says, notwithstanding, anything contained in subsections 1 and 2, but subject to the provisions of schedule 5, if, in any financial year, a company has no profits, or its profits are inadequate, the company shall not pay to its directors, including any managing or whole-time director or manager, by way of remuneration, any sum, exclusive of any fees payable to directors, under subsection, 5, hereunder, except in accordance with the provisions of Schedule 5, and if it is not able to comply with such provisions, with the previous approval of the central government. So, 
if we analyze the important points brought by subsection 3. It says, Notwithstanding anything contained in subsections 1 and 2, means, provisions of subsection 3, are prevailing or overriding, on the provisions of subsection 1 and 2. Next point. But, subject to the provisions of Schedule 5, means, any remuneration, if paid, under subsection 3, it should be, subject to the provisions of Schedule 5 of the Act. Then, if, in any financial year, a company has no profits or its profits are inadequate, means, the provisions of subsection 3, would become applicable, only if, the company has no profits, or having inadequate profits, in a particular financial year. We have already discussed the situation of no profits, or inadequate profits. Then, exclusive of any fees, payable to directors under subsection, 5, means, sitting fees is actually free from the limits of remuneration provided under Schedule 5 of the Act. The last part of the subsection 3. And, if the company is not able to comply, the provisions of Schedule 5, it can pay the remuneration with the previous approval, of the central government. Now, we would discuss the other provisions, of Section 197. Let's start with subsection 4. It says, the remuneration payable to the directors of a company, including any managing or whole time director or manager, shall be determined, in accordance with, and subject to the provisions of this section, either by the articles of the company, or by a resolution or, if the articles so require, by a special resolution, passed by the company in general meeting, and the remuneration payable to a director determined aforesaid shall be inclusive of the remuneration payable to him, for the services rendered by him, in any other capacity. So, the broad points given in subsection 4 are, remuneration shall be determined in accordance with the provisions of section 197. Means, you cannot determine the remuneration otherwise. Therefore, any amount paid to the director or managerial personnel, must be in compliance with section 197. Next. Remuneration can be determined, either by the articles of the company, or by a resolution passed by the shareholders, or by a special resolution, if the articles require so. And the last point. And such remuneration shall be inclusive of any remuneration payable to him for any services rendered by him. The last point closes the scope of any payment to be made to directors in any other capacity. Means, the company cannot bypass the remuneration limits, and pay, excess remuneration by creating some dummy position for that director. However, the proviso to subsection 4, permits the payment of remuneration, in such other capacity, with two conditions. First. The services rendered are of a professional nature, and second, in the opinion of the nomination and remuneration committee, or board of directors, the director possesses the requisite qualification, for the practice of the profession. For example, if director is a chartered accountant, and the company availed some of his services, purely of professional in nature, there is no bar of giving excess remuneration, for those services. Subsection 5 deals with the sitting fees. We have already discussed this in first part of the presentation. Mode of payment of remuneration. Subsection 6 provides that a director or manager may be paid remuneration either by way of a monthly payment or at a specified percentage of the net profits of the company or partly by one way and partly by the other. Generally in India, managing directors, whole time directors, and managers, are on the payroll of the company. And they get monthly remuneration, like other employees. They may also get other benefits like, provident fund, 
car, accommodation, insurance etc. Non-executive directors generally get sitting fees and yearly commission as remuneration. The directors may also get stock options. But, under subsection 7, there has been a restriction provided for granting any stock options to the independent directors. Other points. Subsection 9 provides that if some directors get remuneration higher than the limits prescribed under section 197, he shall be liable to keep that amount in trust for the company and will refund the same to the company. Subsection 10 provides that the company shall not waive the recovery of any such access remuneration. Subsection 11 provides that where the remuneration is being paid under Schedule 5, and there is a proposal to modify the same. Such modification should also be within the limits of Schedule 5. Or company can apply to central government to seek its approval for paying higher remuneration. In this part 2 of the presentation, we discussed some more provisions relating to the managerial remunerations. We would shortly publish the third part of the presentation, which shall include the practical aspects of dealing with remuneration of managerial personnel. That part will also talk about the broad provisions of Schedule 5. Till then, keep watching csstudents.com. Thank you.